Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. You have translation? No, no. Yes. Uh, you sit together in a group, huh? Yes. Okay. I was saying to the Korean man, I said, why don't you wear the nun's clothes? You don't have to, but you can. You know, it's more comfortable. Every day, same color. <laughs> you know, same style. And everybody see you, you know, they feel you're holy. Wow. Namo, 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 namo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people, when they wear their nun clothes, they, they feel more respectful. Yeah, nobody respect me, but <laughs> I don't look like a whole person. <laughs> hey, can you come a little near? I sit so many, it's already not too many people, and sit so far. <laughs> I feel small, man. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. Today, I told you honestly, I have a pair of clothes, look like nuns' clothes. You understand all of you? Okay. If not, then uh, stay awake later and ask somebody to translate, okay? Uh, I won't translate it. I'm so tired already. I was not enough, and I called him and say, now or never, okay? Because I'm very sleepy already, you know? I'm very sleepy. You see, my eyes are red. I didn't put any blush on it. No, it's not a decoration. It's not makeup. It's red. It's really red because I'm tired. Yeah. So, uh, because uh, I have a pair of nuns clothes too, you know. And I was wearing, I, I pick it out and I want to wear it. Just simple, quickly. And then they told me, no. I said, pourquoi? <laughs> no. I had some, read some, while well, I was on retreat, I had read some nice story and I was thinking, oh, maybe you would like to hear that. Yeah, so I thought, wow, well, maybe I should go and read it to you. You, 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 wah, 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 We don't mean to make fun of these people. I just joke with you, okay? You go out, if you see somebody has some trouble like that, start to me, you don't do this, okay? <laughs> we should be happy that we are, you know, like perfect or beautiful, yeah, or young, or less trouble than other people that we saw, understand? So we should thank heaven for our luck. According to Buddhism, uh, which I know is true, that is uh, whether you are beautiful or ugly, or rich or poor, is all the karma that you you saw in the past life, and you could even continue to saw again in this lifetime. 
It's not like, okay, I just saw it in the past and I read it now. No, you can do it now and read it soon. Also, the Buddha said that. So don't ask me a guarantee, okay? He's gone, I just repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's true also, you know, even in the Bible it says, seek you first the kingdom of God and all the things shall be added unto you. I recently met a friend, very old friend, 30 years old, 30 something years old friend. I mean, long distance, long time, you see. And he looked so old, I was shocked. I almost don't recognize him. If he didn't smile, I would think it's, it's not this guy, it's somebody else. And then he and his wife were very hard. And they don't save much because they have four children. And they're both doctors, you understand? And they have four children and they have to pay a lot for the lifestyle and for the children. But he's very diligent. At home he even plants his own vegetable. So he don't spend so much. Relax. No, I don't have to do this all the time. Relax. <laughs> Otherwise, if you do this all night while well, I'm here, <laughs> later you, you just don't know how to get it down, you know? Ooh. Relax. Yeah? Relax. So I can relax a little bit. I feel already very weird wearing all this makeup and stuff already. Understand? Now make me feel more weird, weirder than this. Because since, since I don't know how long, since I've seen you last, eh? I don't do this stuff. I don't do it. I just have a couple, several pair of clothes, maybe three, four of them, or similar color, you know, dirt, <laughs> cheap, <laughs> bought in Chinese shop or, or from the uh, floor market outside in the street. Yeah, cheap, cheap Charlie. Mm. Cheap chala. <laughs> uh, very simple and you know, easy to wash and you don't have to iron and you don't have to wash it separately or anything. You can throw it all in together with dog's towel and you know <laughs> and your socks and whatever and even slippers and you know those uh, small little uh, ruck, yeah? And they spin a little while and it's done. Yeah. Before, uh, we, I just came from a place where we didn't have any electricity and, and water, so you can imagine what a cave person that sit in front of you right now, <laughs> transformed <laughs> into a civilized, <laughs> beautiful woman. <laughs> yeah, but if you saw me in, on the mountain, you probably don't know this is your master. Right? What have you done with my master? Where is she? <laughs> you understand? You probably have asked me like that. Yeah. Is this okay? We can throw some color on life to make it look a little bit more cheerful. Yeah. Yeah. But when I'm alone, I was very cheerful by myself. Yeah. You, you don't feel bothered. You don't feel uh, disturbed of any kind. You feel just so good. And then after I've seen some friends, you know, by, by the way, you know, passing by, swing by, have a look, while well, I'm coming here, you know, oh, I can't believe it. And between both of them, they save about 10,000 euros, more or less, maybe a little more. Well, they have a house, of course, they have their own clinic, and uh, a car, a couple, two cars, and four children, yeah. the, these are the, these are the only. <laughs> Everything else is just not much. <laughs> yes, because they're very proud. But the, the children are beautiful. When I look at them, uh, when I look at the parent, how, how, how can this kind of parent make this kind of children? <laughs> beautiful children, especially. They work so hard and so much uh, responsibility, you know. When you, when you work for yourself, it's, it's of course it's free. You feel, you feel like you have no boss or anything. But to be your own boss is, is not fun. I know that. I know all this. <laughs> you know, if you have your own business, you know, oh, it's really a nuisance, destroy. And a lot of responsibility. Yeah. You, you come early, you go late, you know. You, you cannot look at the watch and say, oh, okay, time to go. 
you thought you know, before you opened your own business, you thought, wow, nice. I have my own business, I print my own uh, visit cards, you know. I work for myself, you know, nobody tells me what to do. I say, how about the freedom? Ah, <laughs> until you really <laughs> go and do your job, and then you begin to know what the trouble it is, you know, to be on your own. Because no one is there to blame, no one is there to help you, just you and your very self. But of course, you know, people, they have choices, no? they like it that way. But it took really a toy on them, you know, I can see. I forgot diplomacy, <laughs> I forgot, because I was so shocked. I know I look at myself every day and I know how old I look, but when I look at him, I was so shocked. I didn't expect, you know, he was very robust and handsome and, uh, and you know, he's different. And, and later I, I apologize, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say you're too old. I, I was so shocked and I was thinking, I wanted to say, what did life, what has life done to you? Whew. Okay. Yeah, and that's what I mean is, uh, what did I mean? <laughs> <laughs> or was it before? <laughs> so seek you first the kingdom of God, no? mm -hmm. and all the things shall be added into you. I worked for 30 something years already, and I didn't save much. And suppose if something happened to them, what would happen to the children, you know? Still the youngest is still only 15 and they are already 60, 60 something already. So they have to work another, at least another 10 years to accompany the child until the last one, until she's 25, you know? Then they'll be on their own feet. Some, some could be long before that, some could be after that, but more or less 20 something, 25, yeah, understand. So, He's 66, 67, have to work another until 70 something. And everybody else outside complained when the government changed the, change the, the uh, how do you say the what? Uh, retirement age to 65. Understand? He's 66, 67, still working. And if he stop working, then there's no, no more income for the child to go to college and all that. And other children are still in college too. Some are 20, some 21, just us. other 18, the other 26 still live at home together. They have good education and all that, but what a cost. And you don't forget how much it costed them to become a doctor, eh? How many years of hard work. You understand that? And then all that, just for that. Wow, I feel so sorry, you know. I, my heart really sank a little. I feel, I feel so sorry. And they are already fortunate people, very fortunate. They have their own clinic, clinic they work together, you know, can both doctor and they have beautiful children, and they have a house already, you know, and their own clinic, and a car to run around. They, they really, you know, good. Uh, for now, up to now, yes. But think of how many others people, they toil days and nights, and under all kind of weather, under all kind of health impediment, yeah, all kind of obstruction, all kind of sorrow and trouble. Just for what? Don't even have enough to, to, to take care of daily necessity, not to talk about saving. You understand? And if you have children like that, then of course you, you can't save much. If you want them to have good education, go to college, good college, and you know. The children speak several languages, French, German, English, Italian, yeah, Vietnamese, no, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. 
Yeah, because they go to good school, yeah? And they're still going to good school. And the children also have to work, eh? Right? In summer time, they work in restaurant as a waiter, and the girls work in supermarket. Still, there's not much to say. It's not like, like I, I think that they should save a lot more, or, or that they should be richer or anything. It's not like that. What I mean is they work so hard all their life. Since the kindergarten already, keep learning, 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 you know? And, and they already been working since they were young. The you know, child or little thing, you know, newspaper stuff, earn a few dollars, you know, feeling proud. I, I have nothing against that. You know, we also work when we were young as a student, or kids, you know, do something. I work also. I saw something and was small when I was in high school. Or, um, yeah. I had to earn a little pocket money. And when I was even younger, before 10 even, under 10 years of age, I already worked. My, my, uh, my aunt, she has a jewelry shop, and this, they mix uh, gold and silver jewelry, you know? So I help with to do polishing and stuff like that, and earn a little money with my grandma together. <laughs> We were cute, uh, good, good team, you know. Yeah. So, um, wow. So what I mean is, I've been working ever since, you know, ever since I can walk. I guess. No, I'm a little bit exaggerated. But since we were young, right? Working, 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 and studying, and working, and studying, and working, and studying, and working at the same time. And with the parents helping, still that's how life treats them. You know, not much. I don't mean we should work thinking of only money, but that's what they do, you know. They go to school, work hard to earn uh, a diploma so that they can earn the money later. And that's the goal nowadays in the society. It's a pity because in the school, if they teach children more about moral standard, more about God, They're vegetarian, I'm glad. Thanks to the Supreme Television. <laughs> yeah, um, but still eat some fish and mushrooms, shrimp and stuff. That's all, that's just not vegetable. But never mind, it's very good already. Okay, very good. I, I just meet them for a couple of hours. I don't want to stop. Let thy neighbor stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then the spaghetti will not taste any good anymore. <laughs> yeah? I don't want to point to the mushroom and say, listen, you're eating lives, you know. I thought, okay, let it be. Because to be honest with you, many religions don't even teach them to be vegetarian like that, even, not to talk about vegan. Yeah? So I brought them, I, I brought some vegan stuff to give it to them. And I brought some books for the children, you know, these are uh, dogs and birds and wild and, you know, all that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we all love whatever I can steal from <laughs> your brothers and sisters. Because I was on the road all the time, sorry, not all the time, but too often, and then I didn't think of things like that. Just by the way, you know, and so I brought them whatever I got. And I told them, look into YouTube, and you know, they, they did the, you know, the children all knew me. They said, then we know all about you. I said, how? What? Yeah, we look you know, on the internet, television, your television just stopped two years ago. They know better than I. <laughs> they know YouTube stuff, you know. I said, okay, then you tell me that. I don't know how to get it out of myself. I don't know how to look into the U, YouTube or iTube or. Our tip or whatever, you know, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> yeah, you know, Facebook or Handsbook, I have no idea. <laughs> so because he asked me how, how to, I, uh, we talked about something, some book, you know, some music or the child, the children know everything. So I said, I don't know how to, to get it. I don't have any video for you. I just have this book. 
and then the, the children, 18 years, are oh, looking at you. You, <laughs> you too, right? Two, not two, oh, you too, okay, okay. I said, okay, yeah, there you go, yeah, you know everything. I was thinking I came to visit a normal family, just to have some normal conversation, uh, to, to live such a normal life for a few hours. No, no, there I come. Okay, Guru, this master, that already. My God, and I had to behave. <laughs> I cannot just say anything I want. I'll talk like before, you know, talk like 30 years ago. I had to behave then, you know? Oh, my God. How tiring to be a master. Can't even hide anywhere. <laughs> I didn't want to go there and preach to them or anything, you know? I just want to say hello and give a few books. And, passing by, you know, and glad to have some normal friends for a change, but no, 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 they knew everything, everything, oh my God. All right then, uh, so what I mean is, uh, <clears throat> if the people will learn, uh, uh, I've been taught in, in school since young age, how important it is to search for the kingdom of God, or your great self, heavens, and they will grow up in that direction, you know? And then even if they don't want to earn money, they will earn it. Now look at me, you know, right? I earn too much, I, I, I earn so much, I, I give it away even. I cannot use it all by myself, understand? I don't want to either, I did not mean I did not intend to to earn money, but I, this money just came in. And that I don't even take from you, independently, understand? Yeah. I, I didn't work so much. Of course, I did work before because there's a business, and I go lecture, and then writing books, and answering letters, and you know, and uh, how do you say, doing contact with maybe government leaders or all, all kind of people. So I was working very, very hard day and night. Sometimes I don't sleep for many days. Yeah, that's not a problem. It's just meditation was even lacking. So even if if the children have been taught, what I mean is if they've been taught in high school or in kindergarten or upward, apart from all the education, worldly education, necessary education, if they've been taught also about God more than just money or job or get a better wife afterward, you know, or get a more, you know, educated husband or money earning husband, then probably they would be more concentrate, you know, because if you think of God, God will help you. Hmm? God will help you and all the, the blessing from heaven will bless the child. And then if he was taught also to be vegetarian, vegan from childhood, then he's more clean, more pure, more calm. I just saw it on television yesterday. It is said on television, proof, scientifically proven that the, the people are vegetarian, are calmer, more tolerant. Yeah, they say like that in uh, German television. I saw that and I was happy. I said, oh, of course, what are you doing? <laughs> yes. But the thing is, uh, some religions don't, don't teach people well, you know. Of course, even raw meat, they have more light than cooked meat. Of course that. But still, it's not about, about you, is it? It's about the suffering of that animals. Mm -hmm. And now that we know, I have to confess, I didn't know much about environments before concerning the meat. I just concerned more about compassion. I just feel the way the animals feel. I feel for everything, even the trees and plants. I don't dare pluck flower or, or the... I did before, you know, before I went to Quantum Method, but now I don't do it anymore. I don't want any flowers. I don't go out and pluck anything. Even in the mountain, when I was kind of short of things to eat, 
and uh, people can pluck leaves, yeah? We can boil leaves together to drink as tea or eat or grass even, some kind of grass. But I didn't say, I said, don't worry, I won't touch it, don't worry. I was thinking about that, but I won't <laughs> touch it. I couldn't do it, you know? So I put them some water, even though we have very, very shortage of water. What we say, you know? When I wash my hand, wash my face, I wash into a bucket instead. I cut the, the pipe under my sink, yeah, so that the water run direct into the bucket, and I can use that for toilet or for some flower, so for the, the little bushes or grasses around me. Yeah. You collect the rain water and use, yeah. But even then, uh, sometimes you don't collect enough, so we have to always spare, you know, in case. And before I left that mountain, I put a lot of water in a big bucket for the bees, because they all come for water, bees and flies and birds. In that mountain, normally they have a stream and there's some water it drip, dripping before we can take a big bucket to bring home. Now I don't have nothing. So all the bees and the birds and the rats, whatever, squirrel, they all came to my tent area. I put two tents, the one for my dog, <laughs> for me. And then we have, before I leave, I was thinking, what to do now? I'm going. I'm going. Oh. And how, how, how do the bees do it now? What to do? Because it will be hotter now, you know, July and August and September. It's very hot. It won't rain until maybe after, maybe at the end of September. Even then, it's many months. So I was thinking what to do, what to do. Because if I put water there, maybe they drown, you know? When I'm there, I can pick them up, but when I'm not there, what to do? And if, uh, if I put a lot of water, the bird might slip in it and cannot come up. Ah, and then I was thinking of some situation. I put some branch, you know, like a branch, or if some, if some bird, something fall down, it can climb up, like a stair, you know, similar, yeah. And I also put some floating, wood, you know, there's some small piece of wood, wood, uh, wood uh, bark that uh, they sell them in, in garden shop. And I, I, I put some of them on a big bucket and they float on water so the bee would never drown. Even if, so they know it. I tell them, go in the middle, you know. <laughs> I, I train them before I go, I, I, go in the middle, go on that thing, you know, that floating thing. Don't drown. Don't you wet your wing. You can't fly. And they know it. They just go around and zoop right in the middle. Oh, I was so happy. Say, good, good, good. Good, <laughs> good students. <laughs> <clears throat> because even though the mountain uh, has no water, but they are the survival uh, strength of those mountain flowers, bushes, and plants are incredible. The whole mountain is full of flowers, different kinds. Different kinds, yellow, purple, blue even, uh, <coughs> violet, darker yellow, pink, red. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I said, my God, I'm so rich, you know? Big garden like this. <laughs> and we use the rainwater to filter for drinking. And so we, we manage okay, because otherwise, if we just use rainwater, it's not good enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so very happy there, so happy, happy, happy. In fact, uh, I'm not so happy coming back here. Mm -hmm. Well, I just thought I, I come and have a look, see how I feel. Mm. Going back to the civilization, <laughs> yeah. become more colorful, pretty, pretty. <laughs> Oh, it's not so bad. I get, I get used to it. Yeah, okay? I get used to it soon. It's just our habit. You know, our habit. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I have a, a nice book. Well, I have many, not many, not as many as I want, but there are some books about Buddh in the Buddhism. The Buddhism is nice, is because they have many books. You know, many stories. The Buddha lived so long, 
you know? He became a monk, when enlightened when he was only 30-something, like I was. <laughs> and so he lived until 80s, you know, 80s. So all these years, he talks and talks and talks, different situations to different people. And, and he has a very good record, record of Anand. He remembers everything. My God, I wish I had one like that. Then we don't have to bother about it. You know, I don't dare to call them to tell them that I'm coming. So we have to start immediately when I came. That's why I have to go scratching, <laughs> looking for video and camera and all that. Understand? If we just had Anand, <laughs> Buddha's uh, assistant, you know, right hand side, then we don't need all this, you know. All he does is just talk, talk, and then you write out for yourself, each one. Huh? So that's how it became so many sutra. I bet this is the, I think this is the most talkative religion <laughs> that I, I think. Um, yeah, I, the Christian, we have only one Bible, huh? and uh, mostly one Koran, huh? and uh, others maybe just one, like Bhagavad Gita, some Vedas, yeah, and Sikhism, Sikh has one Grand Sahib. I mean, maybe I don't know all the religions in the world, but oh, the the ones I knew, they they have very uh, not much story, not too many books, not too many sutra like Buddhism. Yeah, it's very interesting, very interesting for me. I met this French doctor, and he just told me uh, when you see the mosquito, you do like this. <laughs> so I say, yeah, yeah, just. I said, you do the same, no? I said, no, not really. No. I use a cup. And, you know, a cup. And then I put something under that and I put them out. Mm. If sometimes, accidentally, yes. Mm. Because I tell you what, in the mountain, I had a very, very interesting, uh, how do you say, beginning um, meeting huh? with a little insect. He's, he's a she, or she, he was a she. He's a man like, you know? Not Alan, but kind of macho, you know, reaction to me, you know? I was uh, trying to fix something for the dogs, or for me, I can't remember. Or for both, you know, mostly I couldn't, and I gave some to him. Less salty first, and then whatever I put afterward, you know, my part, I put more. Otherwise, I don't taste anything anymore nowadays. I keep asking, the two person who takes care of my dog. I says, is, is you, you eating well? Are you okay, everybody? And he said, yes, good, why not, master? I said, I don't taste nothing. So it's me, I thought it's the weather, it's you, Are everybody the same. So I had to put a lot of pepper, you know, black pepper, and uh, hot pepper, you know, more spicy, something so that I can swallow. Hmm? Hmm. I'd be happy when the day comes when I'm free of or eating or wearing. Oh, I mean, I wear something else, but <laughs> I'd be happy if I don't have to do so much stuff, you know, just for this body. But it's still useful, so I try to take care of it. Yes, otherwise it's just actually just a construction of flesh and bones and some water and some little items and some little vitamin in it. Or Whatever, you know, not much. If you take it all out together, I don't think anybody will, will buy it. You know, the iron is probably enough to make one meal. They use it, you know. And the bones probably could grind and make some cows or something. Yeah, not much either. I don't think anybody will buy it. They'd rather buy a pig, or, you know, or something. And our brain already would want it, you know. And then they'd probably eat some pig brain somewhere, but they don't eat my brain. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we are just nothing, absolutely nothing. 
But for this nothing, we ate so much from the world and we caused so much trouble for the planet and oh, we are really a nuisance. We are really a shame. <laughs> even nowadays, even when I eat something, I feel like I'm burdening the planet. Even though it's, it is an illusionary planet, but a lot of people, a lot of beings depend on it. So I share every day a portion of my spiritual merit point to any, any being, anyone that I can think of. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's come back to the insect. Oh my God, I talk a lot. Okay, we even forgot the children before. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the children. Your master is old. Yeah. Let's face it. She forget. Yeah. <clears throat> so if they talk to children, yeah, summary quick, okay, then we go to the insect. Uh, about, the, about God, yeah, about compassion, so we don't eat uh, the animals. It's not even about the planet yet, you know? So the suffering of the animals, they do suffer. Yeah, when they drag the animals to slaughter, how they really cry, they drag, they don't want to go, they, you know, they try to, to stay there, they, they understand. When you take them for a walk out to the pasture to eat, they go with you, no problem. When they, you take them to the slaughterhouse, but the thing they do, I don't want to talk about it. Tell them, the thing we do to the animals before they die even. They, for example, the cows, they make them walk through the sterilizing pool of water and some drow in it, you know, because they, they, they cannot swim. They scare also, you know, they force them and they push them and then they, they drown in that sterilization water, understand? They want to clean the cows before they slaughter, but this is terrible thing they do, terrible thing. Many things, I cannot believe this. We are humans, we should be more humane. That's what I say. Forget about Buddhism or Christian or anything. We should be more humane, humanism. That's what we should follow, because we're stronger, we're more intelligent, we're more able. We can do everything. We can create things, we can invent things, we can eat anything else. The animals, they have no choice. And most of them eat only grass or, you know, leaves and nuts and, you know, they don't bother no one. We, we have so much thing to eat. We still shoot the birds in the sky, and they're flying up there, they don't even bother us. And drag the fish, hook them up, and suffering like that, and bring them up to eat. Terrible, and digging in the, in the, in the ground where the, the fox or whatever animals are hiding already, they are frightened of us, or they dig them out and eat them, my God. And not just eating, hunting for fun. You know, rich people have a lot of money, have nothing to do, go hunting for fun. I don't understand this. We, we don't even follow humanism, not to talk about Buddhism or Christianism or Islam or anything else. I don't know, we, we always say animals are bad and wild and ferocious, but we are the worst. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I guess I offend people. So what? <laughs> the truth. Then, uh, then the, the children will be more calm when they teach them all this. You know, compassion for other beings, because they are beings. They're living beings, they know, they have feeling, they, they know how to love, even plants know. Even the mushrooms, they know things. Yeah, the scientists have <clears throat> discovered that the mushroom, they make their own air conditioning. Yeah, this photograph proven. Yeah, they they lost, they loosen their water, and then minimize. Of course, it's only good for them. Don't don't go over there and turn off your air con and go to the mushroom and profit from it. It won't it won't help you. But to the mushroom, you know, they lose some water, and then they create this kind of 
air con, so they don't dry out so quick and don't die so quick. Understand? Mushroom. Hmm? This stupid looking mushroom. So, <clears throat> if the children learn all the moral standards, compassion since childhood, then they grow up. They will be a very better person, better citizen, more intelligent, and more helpful, constructive to the society, yeah? And more environmentally protective. Because we will not raise so much animals and our planet will enjoy forever lovely climate, you know? Yes, because I'm already worried. I told my friend, I'm worried. I'm already worried about your, what we talk about, the fishing stuff and the dead, dead sea and, you know, the dead uh, ocean area and all that. And I said, I'm worried about your children's children's children, children, children. And he said, me too, he too. That's what we do to our children. And we say we love them. And we do nothing. I mean, you do something, but a lot of people still don't do anything, you know. They sit and they talk all day long in this meeting and that meeting, that important person, that important person, and nothing important come out. Just worry about uh, petrol, petrol, you know, gas or things like that. They are minimum compared to uh, the animal's husbandry. We all know that by now, yeah. And I send so many books, you know, from crisis to peace everywhere. The leaders, if they read it, they cannot say they don't know. Well, everybody knows. And nowadays, but I'm glad the television, they put more this topic already, on, more on the television than before. And even they mention vegetarians better, and they even advertise a Western vegetarian company. Vegan, company. you know, uh, ham slice, vegan ham. As, uh, this is vegan, that vegan, wonderful. Yeah, people are more aware now. Yeah. If I don't have to work to, to meditate so much now, that I would continue to to make the supreme television. But I think five years is enough to make an example. You know. And we send a lot of information everywhere to the leaders and to the newspapers, people. And, and now I told them to, to upload all our information, all the things I talk about, even my, my poetry. Even my poetry also has some Zen in it, you know? Even romantic poetry has some Zen in it. So upload them all on the internet so whoever has Infinity, and they will know more, and then, and then maybe soon <laughs> we will have world vegan, world peace. Oh, let's hope. Children, <laughs> <laughs> vegetarians in childhood they become more intelligent. They don't have to even work so hard for the diploma. Yeah, it's easier, easier for them to to graduate. And then after graduate, they continue to be even more intelligent, or at least remain so intelligent, you know? And then it's easier to, to organize their life, and, you know? And saving won't be a problem. Money earning won't be a problem. Heavens will help them. Things will happen naturally that they will earn their life simple, quick, and in abundance. Because, uh, the, the, yeah, everybody, it is already proven that vegetarian people, vegan people, has more higher IQ. Yeah, and if they continue like that, then higher IQ all the time. And I said, "Huh? Hmm. So truly, seek you first the kingdom of God, and everything shall be added unto you." Before, before you practice running method with me. Your life will live less, more messy than now, right? You're more organized now, and, and saving is easier for you now, yeah. And you're not starving anything, and you're wearing all nice, and colorful SM 
desire no energy, you know what that? <laughs> and you lack nothing, huh? Yeah. And you don't earn any, maybe you earn more than before or not, but you know how to save it, and you more, you know how to organize your life and you're happier. Yeah, it's not about earning more money, but know how to save more and more contented, more happy with your life. That's important. It's not just about earning money, isn't it, right? Yeah, okay. So now, like my two friends, one is working here and one is working there also together, but had to go far away for two, three, four weeks at a time. Every month like that, and neglecting the marriage and, you know, deprived the children from the company of both parents. I told him, have to be together, work near home. Children have to study near home so you can give, you keep an eye on them. 15 years old, you don't send them to England far away from home because she be lonely, a girl, and naive, you know, innocent, and easy to risk falling into bad companies. I hope they listen. I told them anyway. Hmm? Yeah, so you see, really, if we seek the kingdom of God, all the things really shall be added into you. It is, I, I am a good example. I think many of you are also good examples, yeah? Yes. And even, otherwise, even a lot of people study business management, you know, banking and all that, they still don't earn and don't save as much as you do and are not as happy as you. You go on holiday all the time from China to France. <laughs> My God. <laughs> from Hong Kong here many times. Last time I called five persons, all Vietnamese, uh, from Hong Kong, United States, England, Germany, from even down under, so far away, in Brazil and whatever. My God, where do they get so much money? <laughs> A lot of people, they work so hard. Even doctor and all that, they don't have time for, for holiday. They don't have enough money for holiday if they have children. Especially if they have to take care of their own clinic, you know? They have to pay for the staff, yeah? They have to pay tax and you don't, don't leave much. When you do business, you have to declare everything. And they don't leave much for them to spare and they have to keep working until maybe 70, 70 something to accompany the last child. Both have to work. Some, one is away from home, one is there. Oh my God. <clears throat> when you're more intelligent, you will know how to make, earn money easier. Or at least you, you say, they say one, Penny save is one penny earn. Eh? Yeah, before you just spend and you don't know what and you don't know how to manage. And now you're just more focused and you just know. You just know. Nobody teach you. I can't just keep teaching every of you individually how to save your money, but you meditate. You see, you're connected with God. You're connected with the heavenly kingdom and then they just help you. Hmm? You become more intelligent and you clear yourself clean yourself all the garbage, you know, that obstruct your intelligence. Even the Buddha say, you, you are vegetarian, you become more intelligent. You don't steal, then, then your property will never be touched, never be stolen. And if you uh, have no sexual misconduct, then uh, have some <laughs> So, some kind of, uh, oh, I'll forget, next time, okay? Next time we will talk about the five precepts, more, more profoundly, okay? Maybe one, one day, one chapter, uh, if I have a chance. If I won't get sick or anything like that. If the karma will not be too much. Or if I don't have to run to do meditation. Or, if a small group, it's okay, you know? But if we have a retreat, for example, like two months before, everybody just wants to grab me so much and I have no heart to say no. So I look like almost the day and night and I have no time to eat, no time to sleep, and no time to even do shopping to, to, to buy something and then get sick. And get sick and don't eat and get more sick. 
you know, and take medicine and, and ruin the body uh, immune system because just too much medicine and not enough food to balance it. You see what I mean? And that is too much. But I just couldn't say no when I look at their eyes and their face, you know, like, like my dogs when they look at me. <laughs> oh, I cannot say no. And I was happy to do it, you know. I was so glad and happy and loved to do it. It's just the body doesn't always uh, have the capability to withstand all that. I drive myself. I drive myself like like a first class car <laughs> and it's already old <laughs> old car. You see what I mean? Even first class car you, you have to give it a rest sometime. You can't just drive all day, all night, every day, every night. You understand? Yeah. It go back quickly. Yeah. And all this light, you know, come and hurt my eyes and we create more wrinkles. Yeah, otherwise I would look as young as you if I don't work so hard for everything, for everybody else. You know what I mean? And facing all this light, spotlight, then I probably look young forever. So some of you ask me, why the master, you know, the youth well and all that? You so swear when you stay younger as I can, I give it to you. <laughs> you be younger. <laughs> so you see how the parents are the same. No? The children are oh, growing, growing, healthy, <laughs> robust, and the, the parents shrinking, 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 <laughs> smaller, smaller. Yeah, like a dry prune, a uh, dry plum, yeah? dry uh, dates or something like that. And the children just get bigger and bigger, stronger. They're taller than the parents, you know? My, my friends are children taller than them. And they were very tall before, and I feel like they're shrinking. <sighs> Maybe scientific, scientific experiments or something like, honey, I shrink the kids, remember? <laughs> okay. Yeah, my God. I'm supposed to read the story for you. And I go on and on and on like that. You prefer the story? Huh? It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the story, for God's sake, right? Oh, I forgot it's the insect. I haven't even finished my, my, my own story yet. The Buddha has to wait. No? The book won't run away. The story will stay here. I hope I can read it to you. Many interesting stories about sacrifice, about compassion, about loyalty about enlightenment, about the consequence, uh, the, the good, the good um, success, good outcome of being compassionate, being, uh, I'll say, yearning for enlightenment, meaning seek the kingdom of God. Yeah, many beautiful story. The Buddhas had to sacrifice, wow, oh, countless, countless of lifetime. He even chopped his hand, feet, you know, bore holes into his body uh, and, and give away his children, his wife, and suffering untold hardship and physical pain in order to get even just one, one uh, stanza of, of, uh, of the truth. Just like everything, just even one, one short, uh, they say poetry or something like that, you know, talk shorten of the, the, the teaching of some sage. Like everything is uh, impermanent. If you're born, then you will have to die. And meanwhile, you suffer sickness and all that. Just even just a simple sentence like that. He has to sacrifice his body. Because this person wasn't a normal person. Uh, when he wasn't a Buddha yet, you know, he yearned to become Buddha or to know the truth and all that. So the gods always come and test him. They uh, appear as someone else, you know, not as a god come down and say, oh, he knows the truth because the, the Buddha at that time wasn't a Buddha and he yearned for the truth. He was a king or prince even. And they demand that like, you have to chop your hand, chop your feet, 
you have to give me your children for me to eat and a wife for me to eat. You have to bore a thousand holes in your body and put oil in it and make light for me. Then I will give you the truth. And only four sentences. And the Buddha at that time was willing to do that. Many more, more than that. In order to learn every lifetime just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But countless of lifetime until he became the Buddha that he was. Imagine. Imagine then we do nothing really like that. We're lucky. <laughs> we have just a good method. We don't even have to memorize just one sentence like this. And that sentence didn't bring him to Buddha or to nothing even. You understand? Didn't bring him light or any contact with heaven yet. No. But after he died because of his sincerity, of course he born into heaven. He had to then come back again and learn again and do sacrifice again. Oh my God. And even became some animals again, good one of course, and then become all kind of beings in order to 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 uh, study more, you know, endure more. Uh, I said. Um, tolerate more, more compassion, more love, and then reach Buddhahood. I read all this and I said, I wouldn't want to be a Buddha. <laughs> oh my God, how? How? If I had to do all this, how, would, how could I? You know? Honestly, I couldn't. I couldn't bore holes into my body or, or take away my flesh just, just to give it to them teacher to eat. He didn't want to eat that. He just tested. Test to see if that Buddha to me was really sincere or not. Wow, this wicked God, I'm telling you. I scold him also. <laughs> what kind of cruel God is this? It's a low God, low level God. You know, the God from the astral level. If you are God, you wouldn't tell that guy sincere or not. You have no need to do that. Yeah? And also have to ask them to give away their children and their wife and all that even. So I said to one of my uh, housekeepers that, oh, because when I go out you know, on, the, on the highway, when I come in back here, uh, on the highway where they, they sit a uh, rest area to eat on the table, they will ask me for my dog, for for a suit, for a regalo, for a, a gift. I say, no, you can't. You know, my dogs are very old now and they need a lot of medicine, a lot of visit to doctors. And, and they need a lot of special, special care. You don't have time for this. I don't dare to mention money because she doesn't look like, you know, well off to do with just an old woman wearing such, you know, almost like regular clothes. So I said to one of my dogs keeper, you know, housekeeper, but they only keep dogs because they don't keep my house. I keep everything. <laughs> you know, I cook, I wash, I, I clean, I mop, I vacuum. And I read, and I meditate, and I cook, I eat, and I feed my dog. You know, the three dogs, the snacks, I, they feed the main thing with the medicine, because I can't be regular. I must meditate different time. I can't always be at home. I have sometimes climb the mountain, go in the forest. I can't take the dogs with me. I can't come back on time for their medicine. So they take care of the main thing, but I, I take care of the big dog. Big dog is easier and I take care of wherever I live, nah? I don't bother them. So two people take care of three dogs. <laughs> yeah, well, of course they go shopping yeah, sometimes for me, but I don't go out. Wherever I stay, I just stay inside. You know, I just don't go out of the, the, the gate even. I don't go out of the terrace or, of course I go out of my tent and zip, zip out. Nah? I have to go out sometime, but otherwise I stay in that vicinity. It's not. Sometimes I feel like a prisoner, but it's necessity. But sometimes I feel happy. Most of the time, I don't feel like in prison at all. It's just sometimes when karma of the world or of yours coming, pressure me like that. They make me feel oppressive. But otherwise, I'm very happy and contented. 
with my simple life. I'm more happy than all the kings on this planet in my simple tent and life. Understand my lifestyle. Yeah, if, if they bring some good food, of course, and we eat together, the dogs also. If they don't have it, then we just eat simple. Mostly I cannot eat too much. No, I try to, I have to. Everything don't taste good. Don't taste that good anymore. When I was younger, you know, I can't have enough food. <laughs> and now I have a lot of food, I can't eat too much. But I feel good, okay? I'm healthy. Yeah, now and then the karma came, then I kind of fell down the staircase or something like that. Or get sick, you know, a little bit, but otherwise I feel very healthy, contented, happy, yeah? I feel I'm healthy and rich. Uh, rich, not money-wise. I'm rich also money-wise, but that I share, yeah? Only rich to share or to do things good for other people. Mm? I can't print money, and I can't break, break on the street, so I have to sell some of my stuff, understand? And get some money to, to print uh, free books, yeah? And to, to give it to them whenever they want to do musical stuff like that, you know, or to give it to the poor people, whatever necessary. The papers are necessary. Nuisance. <laughs> okay. Where were we? Oh, God. Help. Insect. Oh, insect. Huh? Insect. Insect? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> what was it before? Children. Uh, oh, Buddha teaching completion. Too far, too far. Just now. What was Buddha. it? Buddha. Huh? Buddha. Uh, no, 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 no. Just now. Just two minutes ago. You are being content with yourself in the mountain, on the mountain. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Maybe on the highway. A highway, yeah. And the woman wanted to one of my dog. They're already so old and sick, happy. She has treatment, you know, and she don't look like before already. And she still want my dog. I said, no, you, you can't afford it. I want to say money-wise also, because it costs a lot of money nowadays. But I said, you can't afford it. It's, it's too much time, too much medicine, too much care. You can do it. I have to have two people to take care of them. Just take care of them, eh? not, not me. Eh? So I say, you go in any pounds, you know, any adopt center, and you can adopt them. They'll be happy, happy to give you as many as you want. My dogs are too old. I, I don't dare to mention the big dog because I won't give it. <laughs> even even if the God come down and test me, I say to my doorkeeper, I say, don't bother testing me because I will fail. <laughs> I will fail miserably. I will not give my daughter away. Mm -hmm. Not to talk about my children or anything. I don't do that. Why should I want to become a Buddha and cause suffering to my children or my dog? My dogs are used to with me. My children, of course, they might die one day or they might die tomorrow. Of course, life is impermanent. And I could die and leave my children alone also, possible, yeah? But if I have children, I wouldn't want to cause them suffering by giving to some stranger, I don't even know how they treat them. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for my children. I can't do that, so don't bother testing me. <laughs> I said, don't bother testing me. And I said, yeah, even my dog, I won't give. There's no, no reason to do that. There are many dogs outside. The dogs are so happy to have a home. Thousands, of, millions of them are crying for a home. Why do I have to? This is it's no logic that I have to do that to become a Buddha. You understand me? So I said to the doorkeeper, even if the dog tests me like that, I will tell them don't bother. So probably that's why they won't test me. Maybe that was a god, huh? <laughs> Try to. Yeah, sometimes like that, huh? But I say, even if it's a god, I won't give. So don't bother coming testing me. It's no logic. Huh? She can go into any dog tower and have it. It costs nothing. They'll be happy to give it to you. Understand? As many as, as, many as you can manage, no, they won't give as many. They give as much as they know you can manage. They're also responsible. Just as not logical. You know, if I have to give my life, to you or any one of you, for any good reason, I gladly do it. 
In fact, I wanted to do a thousand times for the world peace, for world vegan, for world suffering. It's just I'm not allowed to do it. I have to continue to live. I don't mind dying a thousand times. If that make people less suffer, understand me? But no, they make me suffer a little bit here, a little bit there, and then I continue to live, but suffer. You don't look at me and you think I'm telling a story. No, I do suffer, but it's okay. You know, it's okay. Because the world, people, the hell people, they suffer more. No matter how much I suffer, they suffer more. So I don't mind, understand? I don't mind. Because if I do mind, I don't come back here today. Because the other gods tell me don't come. You know why? Hmm? Karma. I will suffer later, somehow. I'm suffering already, but not visible. It's like, if I talk to you a lot, I lose a lot of cells. That's why I get all quicker than you. Understand? Not just this light, this light. Don't lose some, but not as much as the losing of cell and energy and spiritual, spiritual cells as well, not just physical. I know all that. Not that I don't know. But if I care, I will not come back. I will not come here tonight to you. I just feel like I should come and tell you some good story, remind you to open more your heart, to meditate more, to be more compassionate. Then you will reap better benefit now and later. And you benefit the whole world and the universe. Otherwise, otherwise I would not come. Hmm? Okay? Not just you, if I talk to anyone, I will lose them. Just the exchange of karma. Understand? So he or she become better, and I become worse. For, for a moment or for a shorter period of time, it depends. Just, just like a garbage collector outside, you know? It's your garbage, isn't it? Huh? The smear all over his body and make him smell bad and sometimes endanger his life. The garbage collector is one of the most dangerous work jobs. You know, like firefighter. Yeah, firefighter, right? Fireman, garbage collector, fireman, and police. Understand? So you're lucky if you don't do this job. But don't laugh at that guy who is smelly, who is bringing your garbage into somewhere, you know. Meanwhile, his body has to retain the smell, you know, bad. Or maybe come to his nose, his lungs, and bad bacteria, and sometimes explosive in there, or something, dangerous chemical stuff. So they suffer also, understand? Mm. Some people look down upon garbage men and all that. Why? Without the garbage men, your yard will become a garbage place. The flies will be all over in your house. The, the, the bacteria will be running all over your children's face and yours and crawl into your lungs and your organs and make you sick. Understand me? I never look down upon garbage men. I never think they are. Uh, in a lowly position. In fact, whenever I see them, if I have cakes or candies, I, I run after them. I say, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> and I give them some boxes, and they always arrive, they're very happy. And Christmas, I bring some substantial money, where well, if I can find a garbage uh, headquarter, you know? If I have a chance to go there, I, I bring money in envelope and gifts a lot, many bags of, you know, gifts for them. And they were very happy. They said, we'll, can we put this on Facebook? Can we put your photo on Facebook? I said, no, 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 no. This is to thank you. <laughs> not, to, not about me, it's about you, no, no. <laughs> and they said, okay, uh, can we know your name? I said, no, no need, no need. No need, it's just thank God. It's all from God. I am born with nothing. I just want to thank you. And to know, to let you know that, to let all of you know that uh, we really appreciate your hard work and your uh, important job. 
really important job. Without you, our cities would be ter terrible. Our life would be disease, you know, Latin. And our children will not be able to, to, to grow up uh, old, you know? They might die young even, so full, full of, you know, garbage and bacteria and all that. Mm. And uh, if, I, if I have to stay in a hotel, I leave good tip for the chambermaid. I leave good tip for the uh, reception. The reception I give, of course, very good. Or taxi driver and all that. I got the chambermaid. I'm worried that sometime the, uh, the, uh, the, how say the boss? The boss of the chambermaid, not the boss of the hotel. <laughs> We'll go first and check it first. So I hide it, you know. <laughs> I hide it and I tell, I tell the receptions that I put so much somewhere. So that is a witness, you know. So if somebody else took it, then they know. <laughs> At least somebody know that I give something. Uh, and if I go to the airport or something, I saw the cleaner. And if I have something, cakes or something, I give them. Also, I also... Uh, uh, how to say, uh, how to say, you make the money into like this. I wrap the money up, you know, small. <laughs> and then I come shake their hands and say, thank you for doing a good job. <laughs> and I say, oh, no problem, you want me to throw it away? I say, no, don't throw, look at it. <laughs> and I run before they have a chance to, to, to make noise. <laughs> and then everybody look, you know. Yeah. If I give something somewhere, if it's a very big or small and I'm, then I run fast, because I'm worried that they might run after me to thank me or refuse, and, 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 and I'll be embarrassed, you know? I don't look uh, like a shy person, but I'm very shy in this respect. I'm shy in many ways, yeah? Uh, bef before, when I was young, I was very shy, and I can't imagine to sit in front of you and talk like this. You know what I mean? For one million years, I would never imagine. <laughs> okay, what else now? Mm. Where was it? Why, why did I talk so much about this thing? Why? You are willing to sacrifice. Oh, yes, yes, I was willing. But if it's... Stop away. Yeah, if, if it's a good cause, you know? Me, yes. But not to make my dog suffer. They used to with me for more than 10 years now. 17, 18 years now together. It's like family. If I give him away, how can he live? He don't just live on food. Oh, talk about that. I, Goosebumps, you know. I don't just live on food, you know. They live on love. And uh, uh, Fabino, is that one Fabino? German? The, the connection, you see, between me and them. So just to think of that, my heart shrink already. How would I even do it? You see what I mean? If they ask for dog, then take me also. Then okay, <laughs> get together, <laughs> fine. But cannot just do this to the dog. It's, it's, it's not his fault that he has to be with me, understand? So no need to come and test me around. I would just say, well, get off, buck off, you know, go away from me. I will fail, don't test. <laughs> yeah, it's truly like that. And so we, we, we laugh, you know, <laughs> the dog's keeper, my housekeeper, and I they laugh together. <laughs> because he understood what I'm saying, yeah. Sometimes I give them hard time because of my dogs. Not to talk about how I give my dogs away. But it's so funny why everybody wants my dog. You know, the new dog I adopted, also everybody keep looking at him and say, um, this and that. I said, um, no. <laughs> You go adopt many dogs, many dogs. No, I just want this one. I say, no, this is my dog. If you want, I buy you one. I'll get you another one. No, no, I just want this one. It's funny, you know, not just now. When I first had my dog, Goody, Happy, and Hamid. Everybody eyes on them. Even Goody, he has a short tail like this. And he's, and he's not like the only one on the planet, you know? Rottweiler, you can get them, buy them, adopt them. Even adopt them. I saw where they, I, I adopt a new dog, there are many Rottweiler inside there. Abandoned, no wanted. You can have 10 of them if you want, at one time. All Rottweiler, all, all same looking and all short tail. <laughs> and all, you know, try to wag whatever tail he has. Oh man, 
Hey, with a shadow, you know. <laughs> you don't have to have any weight. <laughs> I can see it a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and we're just sitting together with my assistant, dog assistant. Actually, not my assistant ever. Because I'm able, you know, I cook. I even cook for them and for dogs. So nobody needs to take care of me. And nowadays, you, you buy a washing machine, you know, a dishwasher, and you're happy. You know, vacuum cleaner, you don't need to hire anybody. You don't need anybody to do it. Of course, when you're busy, then your assistant helps you a little bit. You know, when I'm not home, I can't clean quick before I go. Then after I left, they clean one time. One time in a half a year or something like that. Depends, yeah? Otherwise, I do it all myself. Yeah, I don't need anyone. The thing is, people don't understand that. Like uh, the people who has money and all that, you know? Or the high position people. They're proud to have many servants. It's no good. The more you use people, the more karma you, you also have to share. Even if you pay them money, you're too near. You know, you, the, the, how you say, the atmosphere, the energy, it's a single together and, and twine together. You can't just get away scot-free, no, no. So it's not like the more people work for you, the better it is. It's not like that. But it's okay. It's, it's their, their merit to be able to have so many people who work for them. And it's okay too, like a queen or king. It's their merit that they have the bodyguards and they have God, and it's okay too. But not to be proud of it, like, okay, I'm rich, I have many people who work for me, my call and servant and all that. That's just not correct. You have to treat them, you know, with respect and love, all the same. Take care of them, because they will be just my family member there. Otherwise, you will reap terrible things in the future, this lifetime or next time. So, so I'm happy to be alone, you know? So I'd rather do some work because you need to exercise anyway, understand? You see, even the, the, the breatharian people, they need to do some exercise. Why? You just go clean your house, <laughs> clean the window, wash your clothes, you know? Take your dogs out, huh? Or just, yeah, whatever. Walk around in the forest is a beautiful exercise. Yeah, at night is scary though. I have to say to you, I have to say to you that I'm not all this fearless. No, I have fear. But I, mm, I put down the fear. I know the fear there, but I just have to do it. It's not like I don't have fear, huh? Don't have this illusion, huh? I don't boast that I am a fearless person. No, no, it's not true. I'm afraid of many things. Because uh, life imposes on you already, understand? So it's not like I don't have fear, huh? And uh, forests sometimes they have animals, you know, even scum, they can kill you with, with their stink. What's wrong with you? You're tired? Mm -hmm. You want to go rest? You can. Huh? Because it's late, I understand. But I don't know if I could stay again, you see, till tomorrow. Because when I came, they didn't clean my house, and I don't have no <laughs> to rest. <laughs> And my mood feels different. I cannot tell you that everything is equal to me, you know. Dirty or clean is all equal to me. I am all equal. It's not like that. I don't like dirty things. Yeah? I also like what you like, you know. I like to come home, ready, take a little rest, or put your feet up, you know. Yeah, take a break before I do my work. Things like that. Understand? I like what you like. I have a body like you. Hmm? A mind like you, a heart like you. My soul may be a little different from you, but we, the, the physical aspect, the emotional aspect, the mental aspect, we are the same, okay? So I cannot boast to you, tell lie to you, like I don't fear, I fear. I fear the darkness. I fear to sit alone in the forest, a dark at night. But my dog helped me a lot. If I can have him around, but some place I cannot, it's too, thorn, too much thorny, you know? Mm -hmm. If you have seen that interview with the Supreme Master Television lastly, okay, some place is not good for the dog to go in. I wear boots, I go in, but he, I cannot harm him, understand? 
So then I, I'm alone and I'm fearful. Fearful, but doesn't mean that I will, won't do it. Okay? Yeah. Um, even if you know nothing will happen to you, you still have fear. The mind has, has fear. Understand? The mind is alert, you know. Uh, any noise, then you, you know, you're scared of something coming or not. There are snakes, you see, there are scorpions, there are skunk, there are foxes, there are some insects and all that. They are not all harmless. But uh, thanks to heaven, I'm somehow protected. So I'm still here and looking nice and beautiful. Okay. Happy, happy. Yeah. I'm happy, okay? Very happy. It's just even in the car, I'm happy. My shoe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Why do we talk so much about that? What was it before? Huh? What was it before? What was it before this? Just now. What, what led to this? Oh, go give it all away. Okay, okay. So, okay, okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, but that, that was just recently, just a just few weeks ago even. I passed by the highway, weeks ago. Who want my dog? Who want? There's so many dogs in the pound, you know, in the center. There, there are some sick dogs, but there are old dogs, but there are some baby dogs too, you know, puppies. You can have anything you want. All kind of dogs in there, even expensive dogs, precious dogs. Mixed dogs, uh, normal dogs, uh, normal dogs, white dog, black dog, all kind. All kind of rare dogs also. People throw them away. Or maybe they die, you know? The owner die and nobody takes care. So they give them to the center. So, but even, that's just reason, huh? A week or two weeks ago, huh? Ten days ago, when I passed by in the highway, Okay, and that was, and before, when I have, first have these five dogs, I just sit in the coffee shop, have some ice cream with my, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> when they were younger, they liked, they can afford it, you know, when they're older, you, you don't, you have to be careful what you give, okay? You have to ask the doctor what is good for them. When they're older, they cannot adapt so quick. When they're young, it's a little ice cream, okay? It's a potato chip, what they love, you know. But when they're older, you have to be careful. Their livers, the kidneys are not the same anymore. Their heart, everything is not the same, just like us, yeah? Like us. And then, so we have to be careful. And they can't eat that much anymore like when they were younger. So don't feel hurt when you can't give them too much anymore. That's how you save their life. You know, and you can give a little bit snacks afterward. That's what I do, okay? Before they jump anything they want, you know? But now, no. So we were eating together ice cream, you know, one for you, one for me, and everybody like that. And then we ate some, just some junk, you know, potato chips, stuff like that. Because of vegan, what can you eat in any shop, you know? Coffee is the only real vegan thing to eat there. <laughs> Everything else you have to look, okay? Black coffee is vegan. Oh, a little sugar, vegan, okay? Everything else I'm not sure. Brown sugar, vegan. Oh, white sugar, not even sure. <laughs> Wasn't sure. Before I, I was told that they put bone or something in it to whiten the sugar. Yucky, my God. So in that case, we can sell our bone when we die, maybe a few dollars. Before, I, I made a mistake, I told you nobody would buy our bone, but maybe they do. Well, the sugar company, yuck. Oh my God, so when you eat sugar or something, just check it out. They say they don't do it anymore, but who knows? Yeah? We have so many animals, bone, what do they do with them anymore? Where do they put them? Huh? You know, every year we kill millions of animals. All the bones go where? We don't have that many dogs to eat. Many bones, you see what I mean? Okay, what was it then? Sorry, what was it, guys? I forgot. I'm too happy. Ice cream, okay, okay. And then the guy, a good-looking guy with a girlfriend, hand in hand, passed by and said, oh, point goody. Is that your dog? I said, of course it's my dog. Can I have it? I said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> My dog, if you want, you go adopt. 
Oh, I buy you another one. I'm very happy to buy you another one, but I can't give you my dog. No, I only want this dog. Can I have him? Really serious? I say, no, my dog. And I imagine in my head, suppose I give my dog away, suppose I give Goody away. And at that time, he wasn't like 18 years with me yet. You see, like, like these three dogs now. Suppose I, I give him away, then he will feel hurt, you know? And every day probably he tries to look into the out into the gate to, to see if I'm coming. And how would he feel? His heart, you know? He must be heartbroken or very saddened. And I cry already just to think about that. How can I even give him away? Of course I can buy another dog or I can adopt another goodie. There are thousands of them. Look exactly like them, you know. Dogs are a funny thing. They all look the same. You know, they are the type of dogs that they look the same. Goodie is not the only one who looks like that. If you go into any dog shop or dog farm, you will see thousands or hundreds of goodies. Exactly the same. If you put the two goodies together, you won't know which one is what. They're all like twins, you know. Some are bigger, of course, you know, but all the same, you know, like golden brown here, a dot there, and then a, a golden paw, and then black, and they you know, like, and look silly like that, you know, and then just play alone in the yard happily alone. If he don't bother you, you know, but he would die for you. And you see, if you see a Rottweiler in your house, he would think, hundred times before you come in. Yeah? Yeah, it is, there is a story like that. The two thieves on the highway want to break, in, break into a, a, a car, into a, a truck, and to steal something in there, and then they saw a road wire. And then they say to each other, well, why on earth I have to, 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 to deal with this truck where there's a road wire in it? So they left. You know, and I have a funny experience uh, when I was in America. I have five dogs, of course. Eh? I was still young. I was still young, and I take that. <coughs> Sorry, look. I have this cough. <coughs> a few days. I don't want to suck this and make my face look swollen like a rottweiler. <laughs> okay. No, 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 but you know, <laughs> already old and ugly. Who wants to look at? The video has to sell you. <laughs> so, mm, what was it? Harden. Goody. No, maybe the USA. USA. America. Yeah, I was in America. And they have a big jeep, you know? And wherever I went, I took my dogs with me. Yeah? And then uh, we, we were loaded, you know, the five dogs and one driver and me and another car behind. And we were kind of, uh, probably was illegal in some part of the street that we didn't know. <clears throat> probably in that street you shouldn't, you shouldn't drive so fast. It's a street, it's not a highway yet. So the police were coming after me. The police with a car go go next to my car, and he was going to to push the people. What is that? Long. 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 The alarm. Huh? Alarm. The alarm. He was going to to sound the alarm for me to stop. And then he looked in the car. He saw the Rottweiler, so he didn't know. <laughs> So it just, they just disappear. <laughs> Another thing is very funny. Uh, sometimes I live in a house, yeah? I don't always live in tents and huts and, and, and cave. It depends on where I go, you know? If, sometimes I don't have a tent at all. 
I wanted to, but I don't have them. I just have to live in the house for a while or something or whatever, or it's just temporary or permanent. It depends. Yeah? If it's more spiritual in the house, more spiritual energy, a connection in the house, then I stay in the house to profit. If it's not, <laughs> then I leave it like a potato cake, potato, hot, hot potatoes, because I prefer outdoor. Yeah? In the house, I'm bored. In the garden or big mountain or river, I, I feel uh, life is more interesting, you know? Uh, I look at the, this tree, that tree, I look at that flower, that flower. I feel it's more uh, lively than in the house. You know, if you put me in the house, I'm probably too bored. And either I read book all day or I watch television all night because I don't know what else to do with myself. If I have no garden to run around on, not big garden, you know, not enough variety in the garden, then I'm bored, you know? So but sometimes I live in the house, eh? dogs in there, on the beds, the whole room full of dogs. <laughs> Each one have a bed. <clears throat> and blankets and all that, of course. Hmm? Why do I talk like this? What was it? Huh? Dogs. Dogs are okay. Ah, he's afraid of dogs because, and then knocking at the door, I say, oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> the Zorro, you know, he's big. <laughs> you haven't seen him, huh? Oh, he's like a horse. You know, he stands taller than the table. <laughs> anyway, but later on, Zorro escape because it's a low gate, you know, normally I don't let him in the garden, except when he go out, you know, for a walk and things like that for one or two hours and then we bring him in. We don't lock gate, nothing, no need. <clears throat> because the dogs were getting well at that time. In the beginning, not. He and Harley are arch enemies from probably a thousand years. <laughs> but later on, I'm trained both of them, okay, so we don't lock or anything. It's just sometimes in the house and uh, when I don't want them to step on each other, so I have to separate them into different rooms. You see, with uh, just a, um, like a clear gate so they can see each other, yeah? And short so that all the air will be separated everywhere, just that they don't step on each other because some are too big, some are too small. You see what I mean? But when they go out, they all buddy buddies hang out together, no problem. So I put him in the backyard and I didn't think anything. But later he escaped, he came in. And he was so scared because he used to be very, uh, very fierce to every human before. And then he even beat me when he first came. Accidentally, I guess, because I was trying to, to play with his bone. Oh, his bone. <laughs> the dog's bone you don't play with. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> he knew, you know, first day. So he, he beat my finger, but it's not too, not too much. Later he even beat me here. My hand was broken one year. It took to, to heal. That was accident. But the, the finger, it was because of the bone. First day he first came. Okay, any dog who bite or kill a person, he would die too. Mostly if you beat a person very seriously, then they shoot the dog. They will work, or they will put injection, make him die. Then they won't let the dog. So that's why I always keep them away from people. When we go out, we keep the leash very short. Because you never know. Sometimes there's enemy in the form of life, in the form of human and dog now. Never know. And the dog knows and we don't know, see? So I always keep them away from people and from all the dogs. Because you never know. You never know. Safety, number one. Eh? Because I protect my dogs. I don't want them to bite any person. In case if they bite, then they will die, no? Understand? Then they will shoot him. Or they take them away from me. So I protect my dogs also. Not just other people. Yeah, even my dogs never bite anybody or never bite other dogs, but I protect my dogs. In case they do bite by accident or something, I provoked by other dogs. Because when the dogs provoke another dog, they don't talk like us. They don't call names like us. They do it inside. You know? They talk to each other inside. And then they might go at each other and then we never know. So if you have dogs, you protect them. You keep short, very short leash when you go out. And if a big dog, you put a muzzle on him. 
just to be sure. Anyway, it's a law in, U in, in Europe now that if you have a big dog, like my Rottweiler, for example, then you must muzzle him. They don't um, very seriously control that, but it's a law. It is the official law. So like when big dogs go out, I put muzzle on them. I hate it so much, but I, I do it. Because you never know, yeah? Safety. Because there, there are also instances that some dogs normally very friendly to everybody suddenly go after somebody, just one person. It happens, yeah? Mm. <coughs> because maybe that day, I don't know, they fed them something funny or maybe they had too many injections on him and he became crazy. Understand? Or, or that person has something that, that provoke him. You understand? Or form a life enemy, you see? Bad, bad uh, enemy in uh, bad reincarnation, uh, past reincarnation, you never know. So always keep your dog leash very short. You can always control him. You know? When nobody, then of course you let him run. It's better that way. Better that way, otherwise you endanger the dog and the other person or the other dog. Hmm? Okay? All right. Now, promise the insect. <laughs> <laughs> the insect was the insect. One day, because um, the, the, my friend doctor he told me uh, the insect don't feel pain. I said, oh, I don't know. How do you know? You are not the insect. <laughs> because I have, so I told him the insect, uh, the, the encounter with the insect story, you know. I saw one insect, about this long, about this long. Mm -hmm. You probably see that there are plenty in summer, with the green, greenish, transparent wing. Mm -hmm. It looks between uh, like uh, mosquitoes and the fly and, and the grasshopper, <laughs> or the, uh, no, the praying mantis, you know. The praying mantis is not a grasshopper. The one that looked like uh, the tree twig. And when they uh, land on the tree, you don't even know because it looked like a, a, blood, a little twig of the tree. Yeah, they can blend in. Yeah, very thin. And this insect is bad. After they have love with the husband, they eat him, the, the, the female. I guess he didn't know. Huh? The, the male. Mantis, don't know. That's just the one who eat the men, right? Do you know? No. Uh -huh. Now it looked like that. This kind of mixture. And I was cooking something, uh, preparing something, and cooking some hot water because the rainwater. Um, and then I brought it, and the insect was landing next to nearby, you know, on the table there. So I tried to shoo him away. I'm worried he will die. I said, go away. It's dangerous. And he'll go away. He's very small, but the, the face is long like a horse, and the, <laughs> the neck also long and thin, and you know, look, this is very cute. So he, he don't go away. He, 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 he puffs himself up kind of like, like those, I don't know, like what? Like when you're angry with your husband, huh? Okay. <laughs> and he look at me like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Like, what's wrong with me? Why do I do that? <laughs> and he don't go. He just sit there and preening himself, and grooming himself. Like, you know, like cat, they lick their hands and then put on their face. My God, so tiny insect. And grooming, grooming, grooming. Oh, 10 minutes long. And then, and then first the face, and then the head, and then and then, and then <laughs> the body, and then again, you know, lick, lick, and then on the, using the saliva, like the cat, and then, lick, and then grooming all the while while I'm there preparing my thing, you don't care. And it's so deep, so, you know, like so um, defiant, you know? Yeah. I said, okay. <laughs> You're welcome to stay, but. Don't go too near that yellow pot. Huh? You will not live to know the next female that you meet. <laughs> and then he left. <laughs> he probably understood. <clears throat> but the flies understood. Many times I said, tell the fly, you're too high, I cannot get you. You have to go down to my level, onto the, the, the glass door or some curtain that I can see you, so that I can 
rescue you and take you up, then they come down. Huh? They do? You have experience? What? You say they do? Oh no, I thought you have the same experience. Oh, I know about the fly and the bee. They good, they good. You know, because some, before I left, I, I don't put them, I don't put water in a big, big, uh, big bucket like that. You know those uh, like uh, garbage bucket, very tall and wide. Because I reckon I don't know if I come back until the next rainy season for them. You see, so before when rainy season, then then they will have water nearby. For the bird, it's easier to go to the, the laundry area. I told you before, the old-fashioned laundry uh, stream, can I? But for the bees, it's too far for them. So they rely on that uh, stream, which they make into the tap water, but the stream all dry up. So it's too far for them to go. They probably would die. I worry, it's too hot, so hot in the mountain. So before I go, before I left, I leave a big, many leaf bucket, as many as I have, and many floating, <laughs> floating boat <laughs> on, on the water, you know, so the bees can stand on that and <clears throat> drink water safely. But before that, I train them. Right. I guess one tell the other, the three tell the other. Before that, I fit, I, I put water in the in the dogs' bowl. And I put also this uh, floating wood, wood skin, wood uh, bark on top. So at first they don't know, they just stay on the edge and sometimes they fell down. But sometimes uh, some are older, they know it, they balance on the water while they're drinking. They put their feet in water and they think their wings don't get wet. Oh, that was wonderful. I was thinking he's drowning, but no. When I come here, he flow away. So he, he just stand on water to drink. But still, some are drowning. Someone get into water and can't get up. If the wind get wet, then they can't get up. So I, after I know that, I, don't, I cannot always be there to uh, uh, fish them out, you know? So I put these uh, floating stuff. Mm. In the dog bowl, I put a smaller one. Put it in a big bucket, uh, I find a big one, you know? As big as this. Yeah, so even 10 bees can stand around, you know, and drink. So I train them already. At first they run, 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 and look, look, and I don't know what, and they go at the end, I say, no, go in the middle, middle, center, center. Mm -hmm. And then they look, look at me, and then they go, go zzz, 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 and then right in the center. And they go, wow, really good. And I try with the other bees, same thing. At first they don't understand, but later on they understand. If you really concentrate and tell them, they understood. Yeah, wow, I was so happy. Bees are so obedient. Better than my dog. <laughs> okay, that's it, no? That insect is really cute thing. It really teach me a lesson. But I don't think he don't understand, you know? He was so defiant. What's wrong with you, like? <laughs> and then he don't go away. He just sit there doing, you know, my his own business. And I'm doing my stuff, but I move a little bit far away, you know? If he doesn't move, I have to. A little bit more inconvenient, you know, into the other area. <laughs> but I, he made such a big impression on me. I never imagined an insect like that. Grooming, and then grooming all over. And grooming body and leg, you know, hand. Yeah, and the, and the wing, you know, the wing merchant. Oh my God. He just sit there forever and grooming himself. Probably having a date, you know, <laughs> getting ready, you know, at his age, I'm sure. <laughs> sure, having already a conversation on the phone, <laughs> waiting somewhere, meeting in a restaurant somewhere, you know, big flower restaurant. In the mountain, a lot of flowers, and the beautiful nectars for the bees. Some just small bush like this, and the whole bush is just flowers. Yellow flower, so beautiful. Even in such condition, like bloom and bloom and bloom, so beautiful. Oh my God. I took some picture, but I don't know where I put it. I didn't take it with me. My car was full with luggage for the two assistants and my luggage. Mostly it's for work. I, my clothes I didn't bring here, you know. Everywhere I have some simple clothes. Only here I have 
they buy all this for me. So if I have it, I wear it. I told you already before, no? Otherwise, I don't. If I bring clothes as well, then we have to hire uh, maybe an airplane. <laughs> all these, you know, shoes and clothes to play theater with you. Then probably an airplane. Before I even, I even need to take camera with me everywhere, though. Because I used to do it myself, you know? You don't know it. Oh, my life is strange. <clears throat> Before, when we still have the Supreme Master television, and I have some weekly uh, program cooking and all that, oh, you don't know. And I have to bring camera with me. Because I photograph myself. I videotape myself. That's why you don't see many angles, yeah? And then when some people, if I invite people, then I be the cameraman. <laughs> Otherwise, you only see me in my half face or something, or uh, close up. I cannot always do the so flexible, like if somebody, some professional cameraman just standing there and do it. You see what I mean? Just one or two angles, just so that you can see what I'm doing only. Yeah, that's why, because I did many times myself. I can't, I can't just bring cameramen with me. They're not always around. And I don't have enough space. I don't have enough time to warn him to prepare everything. No, no. I just wear a pair of clothes or whatever I can buy on the street. That's why sometimes you see me wearing clothes. It's not so good looking or <laughs> cheap or something, but I have no, no choice. Hmm? Like sometimes I don't want to wear that red shirt or in some of the teleconference where I had to. I had no other shirt to wear. Yeah? Or sometimes I, some, something don't look like a shirt, you know, look a little bit like underwear or like an undershirt or something, but I had no honor with me at that time. And I had to do it that day. I had to send it at that hour to SMTV so that they on time, understand? Or send it before the, for the conference, etc. And I had to do it in hotel. <coughs> I had to cook in the hotel. And, and, and record it in a hotel, all by myself. Sometimes, if somebody there know how to, then help me, but otherwise I do it all by myself. And uh, in some different circumstances, I have to do it for, for the program. You see what I mean? So I can't just have everything. Mm. I can't just have the whole convoy to bring in all my theater. Uh, spiritual equipment like high heel and all that, <laughs> you know? So, and sometimes I have to do it some, in some, um, in the storage or something, you know, small storage of disciples, you know? I don't want to bother them, so I stay in their storeroom. And their storeroom are, of course, full of things. So I, I have to have just a small corner and put everything away, one corner. And I do it there and then sleep there. They want to give their room for me, but I don't want Of course I don't want Because they have to work in the morning and all day. If they give their room for me, then they, they don't sleep comfortably. You know, in a strange area, strange bed, or strange sofa or something. So I'm okay. I'm easy. <laughs> so in different situations, you know, understand? Therefore, and it was so hot. <laughs> it was so hot that I had to keep changing clothes. It was so hot. Because uh, the, the light, sometimes they don't use this cool light, they use hot light. Because we are on the road, we cannot always have everything. Whatever we have, we have to take with us. Or whatever we can buy, then we have to accept it. And if it's winter, the small room is hot, hot, hot. <laughs> but I have to say that I appreciate some of the assistants, you know. Now they're not here. Some monks, or you know. They really are very patient with me in this kind of situation. Sometimes we don't have room like this. I have a small trailer, you know, caravan, and caravan room very small and tiny and narrow. And they have to kneel there and cram, they cram their legs together so that they can stand in front of all this uh, computer and whatever they do for hours on end. I have to really appreciate it. Afterward, I thank them, of course. I give them something. <laughs> I cook for them, you yeah. know. But that's nothing compared to the sacrifice they make, you know. Cramping themselves like that, you know. 
a new and then we go to no room. No room for computer and camera has to be a little distance for me. You understand? Therefore, they don't have room behind them. So they cram. And I push myself all the way to the to the end of the room already. And they push it all the way to the end. But we have equipment, you see? They have to control the computer and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, there are things <laughs> that we have to do. Mm. Okay, I don't know if we still read the story. You're not sleepy, five o'clock? No. I was very sleepy before. <laughs> yeah, I tell my uh, doorkeeper, I, I threaten him, I say, 10 more minutes, I sleep, and you won't be able to wake me up. <laughs> because I was so sleepy. Okay, no, oh, I don't know. <sighs> Normally, I, I was thinking to do it tomorrow, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I take a rest first because I came late already, and it's late, I didn't want to wake you up. And, because I don't dare to call on the phones and I'm coming and all that. You see? So I, I have to go when I have to go, and I, I come when I come. That's why the, the, my, my house, my little house, I didn't clean. Not the big house, the small house. I don't live in the big house. The big house is like a wardrobe. Uh, and you could, you know, spiritual weapons like this kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> and then all the stuff. I, I stay in the hut behind, yeah. They didn't clean it, but I, I think they couldn't believe that it's my house. That's why they know it's my house, but they couldn't imagine it's true. So they didn't clean it. Ah, oh, nothing at all. I just want to take a little stretch, you know before I come out and then maybe we do it in the morning or tomorrow, but then I didn't do it, so I have no hope we have to stretch. I don't want to stretch in a good bed and upstairs, and then they have to clean the whole big bed because upstairs is a big bed. Wow. It's a king-size bed. And if I mess it up, then they have to, and then I don't use it again, and they have to clean, and then whoever clean, you know, have to take all the bed out, and, wash it again and put it back in order again in case I use it in the next 10,000 years or something. <laughs> so I don't want to mess up that big bed and beautiful bed. You see, I just want my little hot bed, you know, the, the one that they nail a piece of wood on the, on the, on those, uh, on some of the wood, uh, wood, wood piece, yeah? They saw it and then put big wood on it, then it's a bed, yeah. The reason I wanted a bed, I didn't have to, but I needed an even high bed. According to Buddhism, you shouldn't, you shouldn't sit on a high bed. But I needed it for my dogs in there. She's so big and fat before. They're so small, I didn't. She also wanted to come in. I said, no, 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 up. <laughs> Hardly, they're all nice. Not all the time, but they love to hide. It is, it's uh, their nature, in, in the nature, they, they, they hide in the cave and the small area, if you secure. So that's why I have to always buy those uh, small uh, hut for them, because they like it to go in there. They don't have to, but whenever they want to sleep, then they all go inside, even hot weather. And then, again, I have to have air come, because it's too hot in there, you know, in the hut. Winter is good, but when summer is hot, and they pack, but they like to be in there. So we have to have aircon, you see? So one thing leads to another. Dogs are expensive, I tell you. Uh, why dog again? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they probably didn't, didn't think that is really my, my house. Because the hut is only, I don't know, one meter twenty, one meter fifty or something. One meter. I can stretch the whole, the whole thing and a little bit more, so that probably one meter seventy, yeah? Yeah. And they're uh, very narrow. So they probably, and it looks not luxury or anything, you know, not even a real bed. So they just put all the bank blanket and, 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 and pillow in, in a plastic bag and just protect them there. And when I come home, I see everything on my bed except a room for me to lay down. <laughs> Yeah. So probably they didn't think that it's really my bed, you know, my, my room. It is really my room, my house, okay? And all the big bed because 
They said, well, what's the point? There's a big bed upstairs, you know? Big sofa downstairs, air con, big room, bathroom next door. Well, why must I go there in the small hut with the homemade toilet <laughs> and shower? They probably couldn't imagine. Understand? That's why they did not. That's why I didn't scold them. I wanted to, but I thought oh, probably they couldn't imagine. They know, but knowing but realizing is different thing. You know what I mean? Like knowing that you are Buddha, but realizing you are Buddha is a different thing. So I didn't scold them. I said, well, I'm very disappointed. And why nobody cleaned my house? <laughs> That's it. And then I had to go up, you know, do my thing. I had to shower myself, make myself clean and lovely, to present myself this product to you. <laughs> Finished product. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? Yeah, life is great, we make it colorful. Bah, blah. Okay, maybe we, we go rest up and then, yeah, I feel happier now my house is clean, so I feel better mood, so maybe I'll stay a little while and tomorrow I'll read it to you, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, we need to take a rest. It's breakfast time anyway soon, right? Huh, more or less, no? Yeah, you cramp, no? You sit all day and all night already. <laughs> we go, okay? Yeah. I need to change to another pair of clothes anyway. So many clothes. Anyway. Oh God. Today, when I came back from nothing, to face so many things, it's a completely opposite thing, you know? And I was thinking to myself, am I happier here or was I happier there? I think I'm happier there. <laughs> More simple. You don't have to look which which one match what, you know? And you don't have to throw color on your face. Just too much. Huh? What is it? Butterfly? What? What was it up there? What? I'm asking you guys, and you're just doing that. Huh? Mosquito. Oh. Mosquitoes. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, fly too. Okay, later you open door window, let them come out, huh? Okay. If there's no light in here and light outside, they always go out. That's why at home, if you don't have to turn on the light so early, then you open a window and door in the evening. Uh, when it's still bright outside, and then all the mosquitoes will go out. And then after, the, especially when there's light outside, even later on, if there's some light outside on your terrace, they'll go out too. Yeah, and then you close the door or curtain, no mosquito, no insects stay inside. If it's inside dark, outside bright, even especially all go out. Yeah. Okay. Ciao. See you maybe later. If not, maybe another time. I don't know. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking it's a small group I can handle. Yeah. I can deal with you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Of course, if more people here, they'll be happier. They'll be happy to see me. Yeah? But otherwise, they can see me later. You know, we make video, and they can always download it on the internet. Yeah? All the things we upload on the internet, you can download and print them out, or make a new copy for yourself, free. Okay? So I don't have to, I don't have to rent a storeroom. I don't have to pay for electricity, water to make it. I don't have to pay more personnel to, to make it. And then it, it costs something for you. Understand? Yeah. When you're old, when you go bend down, you can't. So if you bend down, you don't go back up again. <laughs> OK. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. No, no. You come up and down, you, you have to. If you come up and down the staircase at home or here, you, you hold onto the rail, okay? Because I fell down. Lucky I didn't die. Many, 20,000 people die in Japan alone every year because of staircase. Understand? Hey, good morning, not good night. <laughs> okay, see you later, huh? Maybe, huh? You pray, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what?
Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you.